This is George. I did the um, doodle a while back and I wanted to add some color to it. So what I'm going to do first is in order to contain more or less the watercolor. So the easiest way to explain negative space is to show you. So this is um, negative, this is positive space. This is its own positive space, but you can also, by applying more paint, create another layer of the neg negative space. In this case, I'm using a smaller brush from Cotman. Um, it's a number three, but depending upon whether or not you like to work larger or smaller, you can up the point size of your brush. So by applying a little bit more pigment, you can see that this is more true or just altering the negative space. So I'm going to do this throughout the doodle of the heart. So if you're liking the video, if you could hit the like button, that would be great so that you two will share it or send it out to more people. Thank you. Now it's not 100% dry, but for now it's okay. It's like 60% dry. Okay. And you can vary up the pigment like by adding more water or less water. So question of the day, do you think that you um, like to use negative, negative space within your pieces? Let me know in the description of the uh, comment section below. So as you can see, I'm alternating between the lighter red with the darker amount. And the, um, the ink I used was from uh, my to the art pens. As you can see, the applying of the uh, watercolor doesn't impact the ink at all. This is why I like using Thule Art. Now I could use, continue using this one, but I want to go back in with my mim mimic, mimic brush because it's 
Um, another six. And it covers, obviously, more space. And I apologize for the intermittent um, blurriness of the video because apparently once my ca camera or phone, since I use my phone for filming, once it gets fixated on my hands, everything else becomes less important. Okay. Now this part is too much alike this. So I'm going to be doing a little bit of washing. And again, a little bit of water before I go in. But this time, Just going to touch it just a little bit. Wipe off the excess and the color. Going back in with a clean brush. That way, I kind of give it a shadow. And don't get too caught up in the way it looks, because it's going to change again. So I'm going to do the same here and here, because this is too much like it, that. And I apologize for the siren because I live next to, well, a block away from the um, farm a fire, fire station so I get a lot of that in the background so sorry about that and going in with the pink mints or the watercolor just a little bit Clean my brush out and apply a little bit of water into the shadow. Because that way the water will force its way into the sh shadow area. I like the model look to it and because it breaks up the 
solid looking like that. Okay. I'm going to let it dry a bit and I'll be back. So if you can see, I went over the line here, okay? What you can do is either ignore it, try to wet it again and lift it out, or you can incorporate it into your design. So I'm going to incorporate it and see how it goes. Going with my larger brush and a little bit more water so I can wet it down a little bit more I'm not going to speak right now because I got a country treat And it's also reinforcing the negative space. So each time you um, add pigment on top of a lighter pigment, you increase the negative space. I'm going to be using this technique for here, but I want it dry a bit more. And since I want to follow a personal rule for, that I have of including more than one example of a pattern I'm going to include it as well here and I want to have this a little bit of a shadow here Now, I'm not any means an expert in watercolor. I'm just having fun. And a bit of shadow here. The more contrast you, you apply to your doodle, whether it's in color or black and white, the more interest your mind or brain likes it. And of course, me being me, um, I can add more dimension LED until the cows come home but you do you and we're all going to be happy okay not bad what do you like what do you think 